Hello, how are you guys? So in this video, we are going to discuss shortest remaining time first with CPU burst as well as IO burst. In the last video, we have discussed shortest job first with CPU and IO burst mix. Fine. So why we are solving this? Because it is primitive version. Fine. So out of 4K, there was only two case was applied of CPU scheduling decision when CPU scheduling decision occurs. But here all four cases will be applied. Fine. So guys, uh, I am going to explain it with the help of process state transition diagram. Uh, I hope it will clear the idea of SRTF with CPU as well as IO burst. And after that, I will solve the same numerical uh, which we have solved with shortest job first. And here we are going to solve it with shortest remaining time first. Fine. So, was till the end. Even if you are not understanding the process state transition diagram, just solve the numerical, you will understand everything. Fine. So, initially, we have ready state. Suppose there are two processes p1 and p2 and p1 has the remaining short uh, cpu burst 5 and p2 has the 10 so what can happen one process will get the cpu so here p1 will get the cpu because we are giving the priority to the shortage job first fine so p1 get the cpu now what can happen what can be the next state of p1 either p1 can complete a task and it can be terminated fine so it can be terminated so what can be the next state of p1 so it can complete its cpu burst and it can be completed so when a process terminates so process p1 might complete its all CPU and IO burst. There is one case. And if process completes, then CPU scheduling algorithm will select one process from ready queue based on the shortest remaining time first. Fine. What could be the next case? The next case could be happen when P1 is interrupted. Running process can be interrupted. Suppose next process P3 arrives, which require only two unit of time of cpu fine so it can interrupt p1 is it or not yes it can be possible so case one is possible case two is also possible in the shortage of first interruption was not allowed because it was non-primitive but shortest remaining time first is primitive so this you have already studied while we were studying the shortest remaining time first. But here come the next case. What can happen? A process can leave the CPU and go to the blocked state to complete its IO burst. So fine. Whenever process release the CPU, the CPU scheduling algorithm need to select one process from ready queue. So that is the third case. Now, there is one more case. What will happen when, once a process completes its IO burst and go back to the ready queue? So, it can be the, there can be a preemption. Why so? Because the blocked state process which enters in the ready queue might have the highest priority. And if it has the highest priority, in that case, it can preempt the running process. So in shortest remaining time first, all four cases are possible. Fine. All four cases are possible. Let's understand SRTF with one example. Four jobs are given here. J1, J2, J3 and J4. Arrival time given CPU burst. There, is, there are two CPU burst and in between there is one IO burst. Fine, so it is given and we are expected to calculate turnaround time, waiting time and response time. Fine, so let's solve it. 
with the help of do i need to tell you you know that right it with the help of gantt chart you always solve all the cpu scheduling algorithm numerical with the help of gantt chart right so here at the zero instance we have two jobs j1 and j2 which one will be executed first our j2 why because we always check next cpu burst guys i am uh, telling you next cpu burst because in the kelvin it is written sorted job first as a sort sortest next cpu burst they not they do not look for the total cpu burst fine they always look for the sortest next cpu burst are you getting my point just read the kelvin maybe i am wrong but uh, as per my knowledge i am right so that's why i am teaching this in many of the faculty just use the total cpu burst to uh, to prioritize any process but i would suggest always use the next cpu burst only fine don't look for the total cpu burst so here you can see i have initially i have two process and between them sorted cpu burst is j2 so j2 will get the cpu and it will complete its first cpu burst by first second and now it is go now it goes to the block state for next three time minutes so here you can see j2 goes to the block state from 1 to 4 so it will come back at fourth time unit now j1 will get the cpu for next two time unit can it be interrupted let's see from 1 to 2 j1 executed for one time unit at second time unit j3 also arrive but its next cpu burst is higher which require three and it require only one now fine so it cannot be interrupted so j1 will complete its cpu burst till third time unit so its first cpu burst is completed and it goes to the block state for next four unit from 3 to 7 it will be inside the block state fine so j1 is in the block state from 3 to 7 so it will come back at seventh time unit so at four at third time unit we have only one process j3 j4 had not arrived yet fine so here j3 get the cpu from 3 to 4 time unit and here you can see at the four time unit remaining time is 2 fine and remaining time of j2 is 1 we are only looking for the next cpu burst one is less than the two so j2 will get the cpu again it will preempt the j3 so j2 will get the cpu here again and it will complete its cpu burst by next one time unit so it will be completed at fifth time unit j2 completed at fifth time unit we have only two process in the ready queue j3 and j4 j3 remaining cpu burst to j4 five so which so which will get the cpu now j3 fine so j3 get the cpu from 5 to 7 and its first cpu burst is completed fine now you can see at the seventh time unit which one is waiting in the ready queue j2 already completed so we need not to consider j2 now fine because it is completed it is terminated it is not in the main memory fine and j3 goes to the block state from 7 to next 6 second so 7 plus 6 that is 13 fine so 7 plus 6 here your j3 goes to the block state up to 13 time unit so j3 not contesting only j1 and j4 are contesting for cpu they want cpu which one had the lowest cpu burst between 2 and 5 so j1 had the lowest cpu burst because it is just 2 so j1 will get the cpu first and it will be completed by 7 to 9 time unit so here it is completed fine now at the 9 time unit do we have any other process j2 already completed j1 completed and j3 is in the block state it will come back at the 13th time unit fine so here 
only J4 is there and J4 will get the CPU for next 5 units, so 9 to 14 it should be. But in our case, at the 13 time unit, next process arrive in the ready queue and it might prim the running process. So we need to check. Remaining CPU burst for J4 is 1 and J3 require 4 time units. So which will get the CPU? Only j4 j4 will continue for one more time unit so j4 will be completed by 14th time unit fine so its first cpu burst is completed now it goes to the block state for next two time unit so for from 14 to 16 it goes to the block state now at the 14th time unit j3 is so at the 14th time unit there is only one process in the ready queue which is j3 fine and its remaining time burst is 4. So J3 get the CPU and at the 16th time unit J4 also arrives. Fine J4 also arrives that it need to CPU burst where J3 also require only 2 time unit. Right. So which one has the less? Both are the same. Arrival now there is a tie. Which arrived first? J3 arrives first. So J3 will be completed by 18th time unit. And after that, J4 will get the CPU up to 20th time unit. So J4 will get the CPU up to 20th time unit. So now we can write the completion time of J4 and J3. J4 completed at 20th time unit and J3 completed at 18th time unit. What is turnaround time? Turnaround time is completion time minus arrival time. So that is 9 and 5 in the case of J1 and J2 because arrival time is 0. So completion time will be same as the turnaround time. For J3, it is 18 minus 2, 16. For J4, it is 20 minus 4. So it is also 16 in our case. We are getting the same answer. For the response time, we travel from left to right fine so here we are going to travel from left to right j2 get the cpu at the zero time unit so response time is zero minus zero j1 gets the cpu for the very first time at the first time unit and it arrived at zero so one minus zero one here you can see j3 gets the cpu first time at the third time unit right so three minus two arrival time is two so three minus two is one and now J4 is remaining. J4 gets the CPU for the very first time at the 9th time unit. And it arrived at 4. So 9 minus 4, it is 5. Fine. Now for the waiting time, we will subtract turnaround time minus total CPU burst. So 9 minus 4, it is 5. 5 minus 2, it is 3. 16 minus 7, it is 9. And 16 minus 7, it is 9. Fine. You can calculate the average by yourself. I hope uh, concept is clear to you. Uh, it is very unlikely that they will ask the question based on the SRTF with the IO bus. It has not happened yet. So it has not been asked till now, but they might ask. It's totally up to you in gate exam, which ever never occurred till now. It might happen in the future. So you should practice this question by your own you can solve one or two more questions but till now they have never asked srtf in the gate exam so don't worry about that if you are not able to solve it fine so uh, just understand it solve one or two questions based on srtf cpu and io burst mix and then if you are able to solve this question now that means you can solve any question based on the CPU scheduling algorithm. That's all for this video. Thank you guys. Thank you very much.